Steve here, blessedhopeforever.com. This Wednesday evening, we're going to be talking about the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our belief here at this ministry is that He's God of very God. I got a request from one of our viewers to do something on that, so I decided that's what we would discuss. You know, we come together to study about our Lord and Savior. Many people say that's dry. You know, I don't really enjoy all that. And the, the Bible is really hard to understand. And I guess I don't understand that. God Almighty became my kinsman redeemer. He died in my place that I might have life. I, I hunger to know more about Him. I long to have somebody just to sit down and teach me about Christ. Uh, not all that other stuff. You know, I don't know. I, I People think I know a lot. I don't understand really. I don't I feel like, I don't feel like that I understand a whole lot about what's called uh, Christianity, even in the real sense. I, I try, I strive, I try to study to show myself approved. I, I don't understand much of what's called modern Christianity. Dearly beloved, you know a God who is God. You know a God who works in you both the will and to do of His good pleasure, who works all things after the counsel of His own will. And you find many Christians scratching around trying to change, change that. I, I don't want to change anything. If God works all things after the counsel of His own will, I should be satisfied. Oh, dearly beloved, rest in Him. Rejoice in Christ. So in, in honor of a request on the part of a dear sister in the Lord, I, I agreed this morning to deal with the deity of Christ. We're looking at God's Word, not man's ideas. Uh, many, many Christians give testimony to their belief in the deity of Christ. Is Jesus Christ God a very God or is He something less than God? Is He an offspring of God? Is He, as the Scriptures declare, the Son of God and a Son in the sense that, uh, you know, uh, you have sons or daughters or, or, uh, or is He God now? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word became flesh. He was not always flesh. And that's where we are when we come to the humanity of Christ. But at the moment, we're looking at His deity. I want to begin with 1 Timothy 3, 15 and 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Notice it doesn't say God's Son was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the Spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. Clearly it's speaking of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, for those of you who have a more scholarly translation, I hope you, you got the humor in that. In place of God, you may have the word He. Uh, the, the New American Standard has He. The, the King James has God, Theos. Some texts have who. And so you can sit down and you can say, well, you know, the poor Holy Spirit got confused there. You know, but maybe He meant both because it surely is an opportunity to study grammar. And without some study of grammar, it's difficult to make words mean anything. If it's who, it is masculine, therefore its antecedent must be masculine, and its antecedent is the living God. So the received text, who put God there? And I think probably there are texts with both there because they're both right. It's God. If you like the word who rather than God, you'll notice that who is masculine, therefore its antecedent has to be masculine. Truth is feminine. Church is feminine. God is masculine. Therefore, its antecedent is God. God was manifest in flesh. It was God manifest in flesh. John 1.14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm going to run through these verses rather quickly. 
I'll try to comment on as many as I can. Hebrews 1, 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? That's what it costs for your sins to be forgiven, justified in the Spirit, because he who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. It's very profound, folks, that God became flesh, died in your place. This is really what began, set me on the right path on my journey in knowing the Lord back in the 80s, 1980s. Someone I was walking along with a friend. Uh, we, I was, we were walking along beside one another. He, he, he told me something. He said something I'd never heard before, and that was that God became man and dwelt among us, and I literally stopped dead in my tracks. I'd never heard that before. First thought I had was, why hadn't someone told me this before? It is a very profound statement to make but the, the reality of it is, is much more profound. That God became flesh, died in your place so that you are purged from your sins. It was, and it was hearing this for the first time that I became a Christian. God became man and dwelt among us. For what sin did he not die? For what sin uh, are you not purged? And why should any of you carry any conscious guilt of sin? Jesus, God in the flesh, died in your place. But is he truly God? Well, let's look at some general scriptures. Now, I know to some people scripture is dry. To me, it's not. This is God's word. It's more than the Bible. It's more than a book. It's God's word. Now, if you don't believe this in the divine inspiration of scripture, I don't guess that, that this video has anything for you. Uh, I'm going along on the assumption that I'm speaking to God's people who believe God's Word to be the divinely inspired Word of God. You can sit and read a book of someone else's Word, but that pales in insignificance when you think that we can stand here and actually read God's Word. John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and one is tempted to launch into all the Greek grammar, but what it simply says is that, it is that he's God. Now, I have to comment at least concerning uh, uh, the Jehovah's Witness. Uh, they say that he's a God. He is not a God, folks. There's no definite article there. The reason there's no definite article there is because of its precise structure in the Greek, and there was no letter A in the Koine Greek alphabet. They place an indefinite article there, he was a God, and uh, well, the last Jehovah Witness that I talked to, I asked him to turn to 1 John 4, 8, God is love, and I said, where's the A in, your, in, in that verse? Where's the A in your translation? God is a love. Uh, well, there is no A. You, you put an A in John 1, 1, but you didn't put an A in 1 John 4, 8. Why? And, and he didn't know. He couldn't answer that. God isn't a love. God is love. The absence of the article says God's essential characteristic is love. The word is, the word is God. The essential characteristic of the word is deity. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Everybody's familiar with that verse. John 1.10, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. All right, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus is God. John 8, 58, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham ever was, I am. The words I am, that's ego a me in the Greek. Now, these, the, the, those that heard him say that, folks, they knew, they knew the ego a me very well. He was the I am, the great I am, who revealed himself to Moses, whom shall I say sent me? Say, I am that I am hath sent thee. 
John 1, 32, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. The blasphemy is that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Now, folks, you may not think Christ claimed to be God. You may not think that this text says that he's God, that, that he was just a, a lunatic or something, but the Pharisees who were experts in the language, they understood fully what he was saying, that he was God of very God. There is no disputing the fact that, that Jesus made that claim. In fact, this is what got him crucified. Without that, we would have no crucifixion. Romans 9, 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom concerning the flesh Christ came, who is over all God blessed forever? It couldn't be any clearer. The Holy Spirit declares that Christ in the flesh was God blessed forever. Amen. Colossians 1.16, For by Him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and in invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. And clearly the context is Jesus Christ. He's before all things. He created all things, and by Him all things are held together, including every atom in your body. Jesus is God. Titus 2.11, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope in the glorious appearing of the great God, even our Savior Jesus Christ. Okay? Who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. All iniquity. Jesus is God. You know, we can look at some of the attributes of God. You know, what is He like? You know, I'm disappointed that many Christians have made up what they think God is. God can only be known by revelation. What you know about God is what He told you about God. The only thing that you can know that He doesn't tell you is that He's, he's powerful. Got to be powerful. You look at the sun, the moon, stars, Look at a baby when it's born. You can see His power. You can see His Godhead. What kind of a God is He? What are His attributes? Well, first of all, He's eternal. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity. In Isaiah 57. Isaiah 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. He shall be called the everlasting Father. Let that sink in. Micah 2, but thou, Bethlehem, Ephra, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is, to be a ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from everlasting. You think Jesus started in, his life started in a, in a manger? I mean, the, the, the life, the very life of our Lord and Savior. Do you think it started in a manger in Bethlehem? 2,000 years ago. And that He didn't exist before that. If that's what you think or if that's what you believe, you've never really studied this book. Compare that uh, with John 1.1. 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Compare that with John 17. And now, O Father, glorify Thou with Thine own self with the glory which I had with Thee before the world was. Colossians 1.17, And He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. Psalm 93, Thy throne is established of old. Thou art from everlasting. We'll compare that with Micah 5. But thou Bethlehem, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth has been from everlasting. God is everlasting. God is eternal. Christ is everlasting. God is immutable. Malachi 3, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Compare that with Psalm 102, But thou art the same, thy years shall have no end. 
we are told that those scriptures were spoken of Christ. Hebrews 1.8, But unto the Son, he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And thou, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish, but you remain they shall wax old as a garment, as a vesture shalt thou fold them up. They shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Old Testament prophecies that spoke of Yahweh or Jehovah are referred to Christ in the New Testament. He's omnipresent. Jeremiah 23, Can any man hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I feel all of heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Compare that with Ephesians 1, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Or compare it to Matthew 28, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the age. He's omniscient. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do give to every man according to his ways whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou, only knowest the hearts of all the children of men. Compare that with John 2. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. John 21. Lord, thou knowest all things. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our hearts and knows all things. So he's all knowing. He's also omnipotent. Great is our God and of great power. His understanding is infinite. That's Psalm 147. Jeremiah 32. Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heavens and the earth. Nothing is too hard for thee. Compare that with Matthew 28. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Philippians 3, He'll change our vile body that it might be fashioned unto His glorious body according to the working whereby He's able to subdue all things unto Himself. In Colossians 2, He's the head of all principality and power. He's life itself. In Deuteronomy 30, The Lord thy God is life. Thou mayest cleave unto Him, for He is thy life. Compare that with John 1, 4. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. John 14, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Hebrews 7, who is made not after the law of a carnal command, but after the power of an endless life. He is truth. Exodus 34, and the Lord passed by him and proclaimed the Lord Jehovah, the Lord God, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and in truth. Deuteronomy 32, Je Jehovah is a God of truth without iniquity. Psalm 31, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. 1 John 3, Hereby we perceive the love of God because He laid down His life for us. God laid down His life for us. He, he's the Creator. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Colossians 1, For by Him are all things created. He's the first and the last. Now listen, He is the first. That's crucial for those of you who want to criticize the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isaiah 41, Who has performed this and carried it out, calling forth the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first and the last, I am He. Isaiah 44, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there's no God. There is only one God, the first and the last. Isaiah 48, O Jacob, in Israel, you are my called. I am the first. I also am the last. Compare that with Revelation 1 saying, I'm Alpha and Omega. Folks, this is Christ. The context is Christ. The first and the last. Revelation 22, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. That's Christ. So what is said of the Lord Jehovah is said of Christ. He's the rock. Deuteronomy 32. He's a rock in Samuel 1. There's no rock like our rock, no God like our God. Psalm 18 says, The Lord is my rock. 
1 Corinthians, and they all drank of the same spiritual drink, and they drank of that rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ, not Jehovah, Christ. So clearly the Jehovah of the Old Testament is the Christ of the New. He's the mighty God. He's the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. John 1, 23, make straight the way of the Lord as said by the prophet Isaiah is referred to Christ. Isaiah 43, I am the Lord and beside me there's no Savior. Titus 1, he's manifested his word through preaching which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. In Isaiah, Jehovah is the Savior. Here God is our Savior and the context is Christ. When they came to arrest Christ Jesus, also known as God, asking Him who He was, He said, I am. Same words Moses heard on Mount Sinai. I am that I am. And they fell down. Okay? They fell down. So now that you've fallen down, get up and arrest me. Okay, I made that part up. Jesus is God, the same one who spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. The eternal God, no beginning, no end. <clears throat> Acts 20. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the flock of God, of God to feed the flock of God which He has purchased with His own blood. Folks try to get around this verse. You know, to feed the church of God which He hath purchased with His own blood. The one who bled and died in our place to redeem us is clearly said to be God Almighty. Isaiah 45, I've sworn by myself the words gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee should bow and every tongue confess. Compare that with Philippians 2 that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There is no biblical doubt whatsoever that Jesus Christ is God of very God. I recognize He's also man of very man, but He is God of very God. If there is no resurrection, there's no justification. If He were not virgin born, there's no Redeemer. If He's not God, there is no redemption. No wonder these truths should be precious beyond comprehension to us for they are the very basis of our life in Christ. Many of us are, are waiting for the rapture. We believe it's uh, very soon, going to be very soon. I'd like for you to know that uh, when that occurs and we get caught up to meet Him in the air, it's God that we're going to meet. The God-man Jesus Christ. Folks, forever and ever and ever, there will be a God-man sitting on the throne. Look, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.